Now, blessed is the man, happy is the man, unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God. Now, he doesn't impute sin, doesn't make sin, over to the sinner who trusts Christ. That sin was put on Christ, and he's been delivered for our offenses, raised for our justification. He knew no sin, but he was made sin for us, that we might be made a righteousness of God in him. What a wonderful thing. And so David relates his experience here, how he tried to hide his sin, how he kept silence. Listen to him now. When I kept silence, my bones became old through my roaring all the day long. David sat on the throne. He looked around over that crowd, and he said, I think he smacked his lips and said, nobody here knows. (laughs) Nobody knows about my sin. I've got it pretty well hidden. But he says, my conscience bothered me, and even I had a bone ache. His bones even bothered him. And he began to lose weight. And the friends around him became uneasy, and they felt that he needed to go see the doctor, that he probably was suffering from some great disease. And then what did he do? Well, he kept just going through that. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. And if you're a child of God, you can sin, but you can't get by with it. That's the difference. The man in the world will get by with it. That is temporarily. But the child of God can't get by with it even temporarily. You remember Paul says, if we would judge ourselves, we'd not be judged. But what if we don't judge ourselves? Well, we're going to be judged. He'll deal with it. He takes his own child to the woodshed. One day, that man, Nathan, came in and says, I've got a little story to tell you, David. David says, well, I like a good story, and it's a lull in state business. What is it? So he told David this story. My David got worked up over that because he felt it was a true story. And he thought, where's a man in my kingdom that would do that? And this red-headed king stood up, and he was going to execute the man that would do a thing like that, take another man's little ewe lamb and slay it, leave that poor man in poverty. And Nathan pointed the finger when David said, who's the man? And Nathan said, thou art the man. You are the one. Your number's up, brother. (laughs) You are the one. And David confessed it. Listen to him. Verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. This is good instruction here for you and me, is it not? You're out of fellowship with God today, and you wander the way back. This is instruction for us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.